Hey guys, it's Aaron, and welcome back. And this week we're going to be doing another Star Wars Power of the Force 2 figure. At least I think that's how it's technically referred to in the collecting world in the DC. They're Power of the Force. Because the original Kenner toy line that came out when the movies first came out was also called Power of the Force. So I think for collectors, the 95 to I think 2000 lines. Like these are considered Power of the Force too, even though box says Power of the Force. But I remember these as a kid because I remember the Darth Vader helmet and the lightsaber. But I remember more distinctly the first set that had the red lightsaber carding instead of the green one. I remember the green ones being a much later version. And I'm not sure where RCO is, but if that's a store somewhere, this thing originally sold for. Six bucks, five ninety nine. So that's kind of neat. I know some people that are, <clears throat> excuse me, mitten box collectors will keep the stickers on them because it's like almost historical documentation, like a KB sticker. Like this is when they were selling and what they were selling for on KB. If it was a three for one sale, but unfortunately, well, it's not unfortunately. It's how I enjoy my toys. I'm not a mitten box collector, so that stuff doesn't matter. Also, this line has the 90s tradition of a bio card sort of in the on the back that you can cut out I haven't decided yet if I want to cut those out I might because as you can see some of the later runs have very basic cards whereas ones that might be a re I guess re-release maybe that's a better way to put it of a first series character have the in-depth bio cards on the back of them and I think that's the thing that makes this series sort of weird to collect I can't imagine collecting this mint in box because I know this Leia is released on a red card and to me is a Lucy guy unless there's a big difference I don't see a point in having multiple because I played with for a while sorry if I'm hitting that you know maybe collecting the original red cards in box but I'm like I've got limited space and I'd rather be able to enjoy them. So I don't know how viable that necessarily is. And the big difference is that this may be the only Leia in this outfit that I get unless I find something that says there's a big difference between all these different ones. Anyway, with that in mind, let's get rid to checking out Leia in Bosch disguise this week. I think it'll be a good one. Because she's got a cool removable helmet. Okay, guys, here we are in fig cam mode, I guess. And this week, as you noticed in the introduction, we're doing Leia in Bosch disguise, blaster rifle, and bounty hunter helmet. So this one has the non hollow picture you saw on the Chewbacca has a little hollow sticker that goes over top of it. I think that just has to do with which release of the figure this is. I think this is a second release. I guess in the line or the uh, wave. So it doesn't have the hollow sticker. It doesn't matter to me as a uh, Lucy collector on the back. Also since this one is I think a release of one of the originals, <laughs> originals they have the easier the cheaper bio card on the back but I still might keep those. So let's just go ahead and get into the cracking into this one and not lollygag as much as maybe we did on the Chewbacca one. Let's, I'm trying to open them from the bottom because I kind of want to preserve the, the card in case I decide to keep it. So bend it at the bottom. Naturally there's going to be some lost stuff on the back because you can see where the card comes to. So they're not going to be pristine on the back. but. I, I guess that's to be expected, honestly. Because you didn't always get the actual cards in the figures. Some figures did, but not all the ones. What is it? Got it there. Get her out of the clamshell. Let's dump her and let's try not to lose the helmet. And her weapon, which is a stick. Oh. Is it taking me? It might be taking me. Really, really, I have to. Can I? Wait, 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 wait. Can 
I do the other trick. Yeah, slid it down. I was a little worried there. I was like, I don't want to bend it too much, but her weapon is. Hey guys, as you can see, we finally got her out of the package. And first off, I'd like to thank you guys for sticking with me because I missed last week, so this is sort of a bonus episode to make up for it. Or you can look at the Zack Ryder one as the bonus, however you want to look at it. But let's get to looking at this Leia. Um, if you're unfamiliar with the series, maybe you're newer to Star Wars, this is the costume she had on in Return of the Jedi when they have to, well, when they break in the Jabba's Palace to rescue Han from Carbonite. Let's start with the face. In my opinion, this one is much better than the regular Leia, or the classic Leia in the, like, white dress outfit. She had kind of a monkey face. It could have been the hairdo, but, uh... As you can see she's got painted brown eyes and they painted the lips a little pink so it sort of pops out from the face even though the white might be blowing that soft pink out but trust me it's there. Her hair is molded in a bun because as part of the disguise she has a helmet that we'll cover later in the accessories. I like the detail on the side with the loose strands of hair like right there. It's, I guess it's not a super big deal, but I just think it it gives the care it gives it more character. Like she's kind of been her head's been in this stuffy helmet, and they could have just easily molded it straight back. But I think it's a good little bit of character. Then we get to the clothes and the chest. She's wearing this brown robe top because I'm assuming this down here is part of the robe. Or tan, I should say tan, because there's tans and browns, and I'm gonna have to jump back and forth between them. It's got good, you know, molded texture for the sleeves, and then she's wearing a brown overshirt or a chocolate brown overshirt or a wrap. Only reason I say it might be a wrap is if you look at the sides, it's painted that tan color. Now, granted, that could have been. Like her body's painted is molded in a tan plastic except for maybe the head. And then they just didn't paint the sides, not thinking. Because the chest here in the middle is painted, you know, where's that dark brown? And so I, I'd call it an overshirt, but you might call it a wrap, depending on how you want to look at it. It's got this nice uh see what the light will catch it there, that nice rib texture around the rib cage. If you guys know of a better word for that texture, let me know because ribbed sounds weird, but it's the only way I know to put it. And it wraps around the back. But see, it also doesn't come up here on the shoulders on the back, so I don't know if that was a painted thing. Like a painted era. I should probably go look at some pictures from uh, the movies to see. But then she's got this antique brass colored backpack that has these two canisters. I'm not sure what they're for. I'm not super versed in like that aspect of Star Wars. Got the little slot up here for the top of the cape that I'll show you in a second when we do accessories. It's got this nice bandolier in the same color on the back and then comes across the front here and the belt matches with a little canister off here to the side. You guys can see that. And what I like and I think is a neat touch. And I just now noticed these little bullets or canisters are painted silver. And the buckles here are painted silver. I feel like nowadays, and even in the belt, you would just get it molded in that color and you'd have to deal. But I think that's a really nice touch and I appreciate it. Her hands are... In the written review, I say she's wearing tan gloves with brown wraps but I'm not sure if that's true because these look like they're wrapped over top of this I'm assuming the finger color there is the actual glove air quotes and then you got all that nice texture for the the wrapped bit that goes over her hand and um, in her other hand her, her right hand or your, on your left if you're facing her is the usual c-shaped grabby hand to hold her blaster but the other hand has a thermal detonator so you can pose her reenacting that line when she threatened Java it's like if you don't give me what I want or what the price I want for this Wookiee when she's pretending to be a bounty hunter I'll blow us all up so that's 
that's cool. That it's it's both cool and at the same time sort of a a problem later, but that's more for an accessories thing, so we'll get to that. So you go down here to the pants and there's the end of the, the robe top and if you can catch it, the pants are that chocolate brown again with a band around the thigh or molded banding around the thigh and then above the knees, if the light will catch it just right, there's this sock X texture like she's got, would that be thigh high socks that come out of the boots or something maybe? I don't, I don't know what you'd call that. And then that all goes down into these tan boots, which have a little bit of, which have maybe straps across the ankles here, if the light will catch it just so. But they're not painted, or I don't know if it's leather texture, but that's pretty cool. And now let's get into some of the accessories. And the quick one we'll cover so you can see it is she comes with this brown cape, which you remember from the movie. See, it's got a peg there and a flat spot up here. And she's got a hole in the back. Now, what you need to remember is to do both. Because if you just do, and I'll try to do it on purpose here. If you do the, the peg and don't put it in the strap, that little strap bit, it's real easy to knock off sometimes. To come off. That one actually held the best it's ever held. So I try to get, so you guys can see it the top of the cape in that shoulder slot make sure it's in there good and get the peg on the back to hold it because when I first got her it would not stay on I forgot that was the problem okay other accessories in order to take her off screen she comes with and I might have to use the other accessory to help me show this off a little bit better she comes with the helmet a nice little helmet it's got that same antique brass color on top for the visor that has all sorts of other various little details like the actual visor bit itself there's a round bit at the top which is where your head would fit in it's got that little split bit in the front some boxes and uh, probably uh, attachment points on the sides and it has the bottom half of the helmets in this oranges brown leather color and it has the filter in the front there on the mouth it's got that same antique brass and then some black painted down the middle I really like this because I'm a sucker in my figures for uh, detachable helmets and uh, armor bits if you remember the uh, the Toy Biz Iron Man line came with a bunch of Iron Man that was like a basically a molded Iron Man underneath and then he had plates and stuff you could put on so I really like that but to give you guys a good look, even those little bits of, what do you want to call that in the back, it's just, it's always a helmet design I kind of liked. I don't know why, I've always sort of liked this figure. So, we will put this on her so you can see the, the whole thing. And, and actually, let me adjust the focus here a bit when I back her out and you can see the whole thing. So really cool looking outfit, especially if you remember it from Return of the Jedi. Now her other accessory is her blaster. It just calls it a generic blaster of sorts. And I do not know anything about the specifics of the weapons. I'm assuming this is the top and I think of this cylindrical bit as a a power supply and then that connects to this box. The grand, I guess the box could be a power supply. But since this is not like a traditional blaster where it's like a gun, I can't see that being a scope. But it goes into this block, block here that has other little block textures. The, um, I believe the correct term here is knurling there. And a few other little like vents. And these tubes that come out the side and bottom that I have no idea what they do. And then, like I said, this blaster is more of a spear or something kind of like the Tuscan Raiders there's your barrel I'm assuming with all these little sci-fi details here on the end that come to this point and it's an interesting weapon but the sad thing is let me put her on the stand so I can zoom out since we've kind of hit everything sort of go over the pros and cons of this figure overall 
Oh, no, I, I'll cover that one other thing before we do that super fast because, as you guys will realize, as I do more and more of these unboxings for the line, the points of articulation are pretty standard. Her points of articulation are the head goes a full 360, no problem. It's the helmet it'll probably do it but I'll explain in a second why I don't I'm a little iffy to push the full 360 with the helmet both arms go the full 360 this arm does have a good chance of knocking off the cape if you try to do it a full 360 with the cape on which I don't know I mean why I mean I guess you maybe want it back like she's running but bear that in mind in the legs come forward about 45 and if the cape's not on the back leg I mean it comes out if you push it about yay far almost another 45 a little less she can kind of do a split but can't do it with the cape on unfortunately and uh so we're back to this point why did I say that about the helmet and I don't know if the camera will pick this up but when you have the helmet on, if you try and twist it, if you can see that's her chin down there, the helmet doesn't really fit snug enough to twist the head. Like maybe if you really grabbed and twisted. So if you're doing like a full 360, I don't know if this over time will rub the nose and do damage to the face. So I try not to push it. It may not. Maybe if you know somebody's had this longer, could answer that question. But one of my other downsides to this figure, and I know it's weird to do the downsides first, but is the only way to do her blaster literally is like a walking stick. It's like this, and I mean, you could do. I guess you could push it back like she's pointing at him like that. And I didn't even have it all the way in the hand. You know, I thought I did. But since they don't have any articulation at the elbows at all and the other hand does have that detonator there's no way for her to hold this weapon like she's about to put it like in a spear position to shoot so this is about all you can do with the weapon now that's a downside but a lot of other figures like the chewy and i think the the uh traditional white dress leia comes with two weapons i think the stormtrooper comes with two weapons so you could find another blaster-esque weapon when she's in this bounty hunter outfit to uh, for her to use for display and just remember that's not the one that goes with her but that said this is probably one of my all-time favorite Leia outfits probably only surpassed by slave Leia and I hear you don't you judge me most most red-blooded boys of the time would admit that's probably their favorite Leia but all joking aside well half joking aside because it's true <laughs> Um, this was the first time in the trilogy that I really remember seeing Leia actually do something so apart from I think this is a really cool outfit the way it looks overall like this is the Leia that I like the most because this is when she actually did something because she was trying to get Han back so it holds a special place like in my heart and this probably if we just exclude Slave Leia being Leia in a chainmail bikini is my favorite Leia and so I think it's a, a good one to have for your collection. It'd be really good to pose if you wanted to get the Java with Han Solo and then maybe a Han and Carver Knight. You could really do you a good diorama. And other than that, and the downsides I've already talked about, I mean, you can argue depending on how much you want articulation. These are very limited articulation, but that's that was in my mind a lot of the toys of the 90s. And part of the reason I collect this line is because of the nostalgia. Because you would be right. The Black Series, which I still might collect at some point. If you're looking for like really good articulation for photo photography is better. But these are so much cheaper. And there's just a nostalgia of I remember these being the ones that were on the shelf when I was a kid. So if you don't have that nostalgia, this may not be the line. But also bear in mind... These are a lot smaller. These are the uh, traditional three and three quarter, like the original Kenners. 
well, I say original Kenners. These are still technically by Kenner at the time. But um, that's, I don't know, they just had all the special place in my heart. And three and three quarter inches doesn't take as much place on the shelf. If you've seen the background, my elite shelf, I might have to do something different for risers because it's eating up so much space. But anyway, guys, good figure to pick up. Well, look there, I touched the cape at the bottom and it fell off. I think it's worth a pickup. And as I've sort of told you, if you're starting out collecting these guys, you're probably better off getting them in lots because if you don't, a figure's going to run you about $10 or more depending on the popularity of the figure. Because if this one's like $5, one figure is still going to be $5 to ship to you. So $10, not bad again, but trying to save a little money on shipping. If you get three or four of these figures and it's like $10 or $15 shipping, that's a little bit better than if you had bought say each of the six separately anyway guys thank you for spending time with me today sorry i missed last week this one or the zack Ryder episode whichever one you want to choose as a makeup and this is the actual post for the week stick with us i'm not sure quite yet what we're going to be doing next month i got to make out the schedule and one thing two of the things i'd like to do i kind of need to get my budding gear on and figure out how i'm going to film them but there will probably be at least one one wrestling figure review and another Star Wars figure review, and um, in the comments, man, like I said, put down like what maybe what's your favorite Leia from this line, or maybe Leia of all time, or just your favorite figure from the line or Star Wars character, and just hit me up, man. Let's talk about this. Let's let's get to know what each other likes out there. And like I always say, guys, man, share your hobby with people. Because you'd be surprised the amount of people that if they find out you collect figures, that might encourage them to start collecting. Because figure collecting kind of has this stigma of, oh, well, you're a grown man. Why are you collecting toys? And sometimes sharing that with someone gives them the courage to collect a line they really liked when they were kids. And anyway, guys, I'll catch you next time. And remember, hobby on.